Hello and welcome to Dining with Death. This episode is on my playlist, Dining with the Damned, where we talk about criminals who have been sentenced to die. We discuss their life, we discuss their crimes and how they ended up on death row, and then I show you and taste their last meal. I'm Stacy Lee, let's begin. This is a very recent execution. I find these more recent cases to be fascinating because they span such a great amount of time because of the appeals process. And even though many people find them to be atrocities, they're still happening regularly. This is part of our American justice system currently. This case of Oscar Ray Bolin is one of the more recent examples of capital punishment. Oscar Ray Bolin was a serial killer and convicted born on January 22, 1962 in Portland, Indiana, to a family of day laborers and carnival workers. As is usually the case, he suffered severe childhood abuse, taking regular beatings from his father and his mother, who one day delivered him to the school bus stop on a dog leash, which must have been humiliating for the child. Oscar began committing crimes early in his teen years and was first arrested when he was 15. He moved to Florida in the early 1980s and began working as a carnival worker himself. In 1982, he kidnapped his girlfriend, a girl named Cheryl Hafner, and drove her around for hours in Tampa Bay. He was arrested for false imprisonment, but the charges were dropped, and a year later, Cheryl married him. As we see time and again, this was a violent man who committed crimes over and over, but was always released and then his violent tendencies soon escalated to murder. It really is fascinating and disturbing how often we see the same story over and over again and how often that story ends the same way. Now, that's not to say that there aren't stories out there that we don't know about because we don't hear about them. But the stories we hear about so often involve childhood abuse, bad parenting, neglect, outright physical abuse. And then we see kind of an escalation. They start at a young age with crime and arson and maybe even kidnapping. And before you know it, it's a serial killer. On January 25th, 1986, 25 year old Natalie Blanche Holly was working her shift as a night manager at Church's Fried Chicken in Tampa, Florida. She had just finished closing up the store for the night and was locking up with a colleague who left after the night duties were finished. Natalie left the store around 1.30 a.m. and headed towards her car. Sometime in those moments, she crossed paths with Oscar Ray Bolin, who stabbed her to death. Her body was found the next morning, just hours later, by a morning jogger. On November 5, 1986, a high school student named Stephanie Collins went to her job at a drugstore. She finished her shift, left the store, and disappeared. Searches were conducted for Stephanie for weeks, and on December 5th, a month after she vanished, her body was found wrapped in sheets and towels. She had been stabbed and her skull had been crushed. On the same day that Stephanie Collins' body was found, a 26-year-old bank worker went missing. Terry Lynn Matthews disappeared after running some errands that included going to the post office. Someone came upon her empty car, sitting in the street by the post office with the engine still running. Later that day, Terry's body was found in the woods. She was wrapped in a sheet with a hospital's logo on it. Many of the authorities agreed at this point. They were looking for a serial killer, but they had absolutely no idea who it was. In 1987, a 20-year-old waitress in Toledo, Ohio was kidnapped and raped by three men. She reported that one of the men then pulled a gun on her and pulled the trigger, but the gun jammed. For some reason, after that happened, he let her go alongside a Pennsylvania highway. Police were able to trace the crime back to Oscar Ray Bolin based on the woman's information, and he was captured and sentenced to 22 to 75 years in prison. As Oscar sat in prison, his wife, Cheryl Hafner, divorced him and remarried. Cheryl then began to tell her new husband about her ex-husband. Oscar had confessed his murders to Cheryl, and when Cheryl's new husband heard about them, he called the police tip line and told authorities what he knew. It's always kind of wild to me that people think they can tell other people about murders and those people aren't going to say anything. I guess if you don't have much of a conscience, you assume other people don't, but that's not the case. When police got this evidence and checked it out, matched it up, 
new charges were brought against Oscar Ray Bolin. His ex-wife testified about her kidnapping and also testified that she'd helped Oscar dispose of evidence after he murdered Natalie Hawley. Oscar's half-brother testified that he watched Oscar beat Terry Lynn Matthews and then attempt to drown her with a garden hose. Oscar's own cousins testified that they had helped Oscar abduct 30-year-old Deborah Diane Stowe in Greenville, Texas in 1987 and that Bullen strangled the woman. For as long as I've been interested in true crime, it's always so much more upsetting to me to find out that a killer has a bunch of accomplices. In my mind, I think like somehow I can justify, okay, this is a bad man. He does bad things. He hurts people. But when you find out it's a bad man who has one or 10 accomplices that are keeping his secrets for him, that makes me like lose faith in people. I don't know. That's just so much more upsetting to me. Oscar was brought back in on trial. This man standing here in his suit, looking like he works in a bank, is incredibly deceptive. This guy is a piece of human garbage. He's a monster who committed horrific acts. In 1991, Oscar Ray Bolin was convicted of the murder of Natalie Hawley, and he was sentenced to death. He is then convicted of the murder of Stephanie Collins. Texas prosecutors declined to press charges on the murder of Deborah Diane Stowe because Bolin had already been sentenced to death in the trials of Matthews, Hawley, and Collins. So Oscar Ray Bolin is now sitting on death row when he meets a woman in 1995 who is working in the public defender's office in Hillsborough County. This woman is named Rosalie Martinez, and as she becomes familiar with Oscar Ray Bolin's case, she convinces herself that he is innocent. This woman is not well. Rosalie Martinez was married to a prominent Tampa attorney. They had four daughters, and by all accounts, Rosalie had been a great wife and mother, but something had changed in her. In 1996, she told a reporter, I wanted to be loved like I've never been loved before. Passion, someone to put me on an emotional pedestal, not with material things. She left her husband and her daughters to marry a serial killer on death row. There is something so pathetic about that to me. We all want to be loved. We all want to be treated well. But to believe, <laughs> to believe that you can get something out of a man who is sitting on death row in prison that a person cannot give you on the outside is very bizarre thinking to me. And on top of that, he's dangerous. And on top of that, he's a killer. He's a horrible person. That's just not balanced thinking, to put it mildly. Rosalie said, I never ever thought for a second that he was guilty of those three murders. This woman is a great case of hybristophilia, which is a sexual fascination and interest in people who commit crimes. And it's a real thing. Rosalie said, I really feel sorry for the victim's families. I really do. I feel for them. I have four beautiful children. I can't imagine, but I want them to understand that I wouldn't have dedicated 20 years of my life on something I don't truly believe in. You know, not too long ago, people spent decades of their lives trying to prove that the moon was made out of cheese. Just because you dedicate decades of your life to something, it doesn't mean it's a worthy cause. On October 5th, 1996, Oscar Ray Bolin and Rosalie Martinez were married over the phone as Rosalie stood in a pink gown and a priest conducted the ceremony. Rosalie later told the press that she wanted to marry Oscar, but also felt like the death row wedding would draw attention to his case. Kathleen Reeves, the mother of Terry Lynn Matthews, said at the time, This person deliberately took these girls. It's somebody that needs to be dealt with, and this is the way we deal with criminals like this. You can hear her frustration in that statement. This man who killed her daughter, her child, is allowed a life on death row where he is provided for, for decades. He's allowed to marry. He's allowed to have relationships. You know, I always say I'm kind of on the fence with the death penalty, but if I know one thing, I know we need to update the process. We have DNA now, and I really strongly feel that if we have conclusive DNA evidence in a death row case, if we're going to have the death penalty, Th that person doesn't need to sit on death row for 10 years. Or let's just do away with the death penalty altogether and take it off of the table. And then that way, the families do not have to be dragged back to court. 
over and over and over for decades. That I think is the thing that I find the most upsetting is you hear these people saying it's just never over for them. They never have any kind of peace because they're always being dragged back into court for another hearing or another appeal. Something we need to change something here. I mean, I'm not one of the family members and it frustrates me. Imagine how they feel. Oscar Ray Bolin went through years of appeals, decades even. Oscar's new attorney said, I cannot imagine the pain the families have suffered, but this is not the solution. Executing people is barbaric, and I don't think it's healthy for us to find joy in a healthy human being being executed. Yeah, there are a lot of people in this country that feel that way, and around the world. They think it's wild that we still execute people. But I also wonder if that attorney realizes that, you know, that statement's a little bit ironic. He's talking about somebody who did exactly that. He killed people, healthy people, that were doing absolutely nothing. You know, his client has done something very, very wrong. Those people didn't do anything. On January 7th, 2016, Oscar Ray Bolin was prepared for execution at Florida State Prison in Stark, Florida. He was given a last meal, which of course I'm going to show you. After his last meal, he was led to the death chamber and strapped to the gurney. He was asked if he had any last words, to which he replied, no, sir. At 10.16 p.m., after a four-hour final appeal and plea to the governor that was denied, Oscar Ray Bullen was administered the lethal injection and was pronounced dead. Kathleen Reeves, Terry Lynn Matthews' mother, said, It isn't fair that Bullen can only be executed once for multiple killings. She also said, he dies for all of our girls. She continued, it was not a celebratory event, but I feel relief that it finally occurred. I will go to my grave knowing I experienced closure in my daughter's murder. So what did serial killer Oscar Ray Bullen request for his last meal? I'm going to show you. Here it is, Oscar Ray Bullen's last meal. He ordered a steak with a baked potato. He requested a green salad. I was really surprised and I'm still really surprised at how many of these executed inmates order salad for their last meal. I asked you guys if you knew why uh, a few months ago and a lot of you responded, I was not aware um, there are no fresh vegetables in prison. So if I hadn't had fresh vegetables for a long time, I would definitely want a salad. So I definitely love hearing from you guys because you share experiences with me that I haven't had and you teach me about you know the things I talk about. He requested garlic bread, he asked for a can of Coke, and he asked for lemon meringue pie. Let's taste it. Mm. I'm sure even a prison steak tastes good, because steak is steak. Oh. He requested a baked potato. I love my potatoes. Got a little chopped green salad here. Mm -hmm. Doesn't get much more American than the death penalty or Coca-Cola. <laughs> Sorry, Coke. <laughs> Full sugar soda, yes. Got a little garlic bread here. And last but not least, a slice of lemon meringue pie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a lemon person. I much prefer lemon and like custardy vanilla flavors to, you know, chocolate flavors or caramel flavors. So yeah, I like this. Thank you for joining me today on Dining with Death dining with the damned. If you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more from me. It really does help to support me. Stay safe and be kind to each other and I'll see you next time on Dining with Death. Bye.